let's take a look at Twitter. The first thing you'll want to do is actually create a Twitter account. And just because you're creating a, an account does not mean that you have to like immediately start tweeting everything that you ate for breakfast, but it's going to help you kind of save some people to follow and things like that. So you just go to twitter.com and you can do sign up. You can also do this through the mobile app. So you would put in your name, your email address, and then you would pick a username, which is that at symbol and your username, and that's your Twitter handle. So that's how people would find you and follow you. And then you would choose a password, put in the CAPTCHA verification, and then hit sign up. Once you've created an account, if you're using your iPad, you can download the Twitter app. You can also use what's called Hootsuite, which I'll show you in a little while, to sort of organize the Twitter feeds that you follow. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on Twitter, and I'm already logged into my Twitter account. On the left-hand side, you can see that there are four icons. You have Home, Connect, Discover, and Me. Me is just your profile. So you can see from my profile, I have a profile picture. I have a header picture, which is sort of that galaxy. By default, when you first sign up for Twitter, your profile picture will be a little egg. So you may want to change that just so that you're not a spooky, shadowy egg. Um, you can see I have 321 tweets. I am following 261 people. I have 130 followers. There they are. And then I have three icons on the right side of that, which is the gear, which will let me edit my profile. I can change any settings that are related to Twitter. I have accounts that are associated with my Twitter account, so I can have multiple accounts in there that I can use. So if you have a personal Twitter and a professional Twitter, you could toggle back and forth there. And then I have an envelope, which is for direct messages to me that only I can see. They are not going to show up in the Twitter feed. So then let's take a look at home. Your home is where all of your Twitter activity that you're monitoring and following is going to show up. So all of the people that I follow are going to show up in this Twitter feed. And I've got a lot of people that I follow. Um, you will probably start with just a few, but there are some cool ones that I will share with you on the blog. Let's take a look at Connect. Connect is where you will view interactions between your followers and people you are following. So you can see here, the top is a tweet from John Oreck because we were having a conversation on Twitter about different apps that people use to text parents and students. You can see that Steve Wheeler and Kathy Sarabona, shout out to Glenn Bard, West Librarian, are following me. And there's that little shadowy egg icon that I was talking about. Um, you can see that someone here has retweeted something that I tweeted about the best one-to-one -one device is a good teacher. And I was sharing a link to an Edutopia article. So you can see that this is your Twitter feed. Here's a little shout out from one of our students because I competed in the homecoming tug of war. So you can interact with people and in the connect area, this will show all of your interactions. The discover area of Twitter is going to give you activity that is related to the people and things that you're following. So you'll see tweets, you'll see interactions and favorites and followings that are happening with the people that you follow and who follow you. You can see trends, and then you can also see suggestions of who you might want to follow. So it will look at the Twitter feeds that you're already following and give you suggestions based on similar people. You can browse categories here. So if you're looking for something in particular, like technology or art and design or books, you can see that Twitter is making some suggestions based on those categories. And then if you allow Twitter to access your contacts, you can find friends. I don't have that set up, so I don't use that, but that's a possibility. So that's the basics of the Twitter app interface. Um, to actually create a tweet, you can click on the little new tweet icon in the upper right corner that looks like a box with a feather in it, and then you would type your tweet. Notice that by default, I have 140 ca characters that I'm limited to, so if I were going to tweet, Notice it's going to count down the number of characters that I have available to me. Um, I can add a location to my tweet. I can add a photo to my tweet, either from my camera roll or that I can take with my camera. And then if I wanted to, I could add what's called a hashtag. And a hashtag allows you to search for similar items that are being talked about on Twitter. So some things that I use all the time are EdTech, EdTechChat, I do hashtag iPad Ed, and I can even use our own D87 Tech, which I will use when I post this blog up to Twitter. 
I will use that hashtag so that anybody following the D87 tech hashtag will see it immediately in their feed. So then I can just go ahead and hit my tweet. Now if I type too many characters, it will tell me that I have too many characters. Notice I'm counting down and this is just gibberish. So I have seven left and now when it gets into the negatives, you won't be able to send that tweet. Notice it's grayed out until you reduce your length to 140 characters or fewer. I'm going to hit cancel. I can save this as a draft if I want, but I don't need to do that right now. Right next to the new tweet button, there's also a search button. So I can search for things like Glenmark South. I can search for particular hashtags or people. So let's just do a search for iPads. Notice it's going to bring up people that I'm already following first. I can look for at iPads. I can do a search for hashtag iPad Ed. And then this will bring up everything that's related, tweets that are related to iPad in education. So once you see a tweet that interests you, notice that there are URLs in many of them. These are just links to articles and websites. So I can take a look at 10 iPad features every iPad owner should know that'll bring me to that article. So it's a really great, great way to access a lot of resources, websites, articles that would have taken me a long time to find if I had to go through individual magazines or visit site after site after site. This brings them up immediately. So I can follow people who I know are talking about these things and then I can get access to the interesting things that they're talking about and then use them. One app that I really like to use instead of the regular Twitter app is Hootsuite. What Hootsuite lets me do is log in with my Twitter account but it lets me save all of my information into separate columns so that I can look for the things that I want to read without having to scroll through one long Twitter feed. So notice I have a home feed, I have mentions, so that's any tweets that have been posted with my username in them. I have direct messages, which I don't have a lot of direct messages, I tend to just delete those. I have the tweets that I've sent, and then I have the hashtags that interest me. So I have our D87 tech hashtag and iPad Ed. So notice they're organized into these different columns, my Ed Tech, my Illinois Ed Chat, so that I can really quickly and easily find the tweets that interest me without having to dig through one long field feed or go through a search. So to do that, you can just do a search on Twitter for the hashtag or information that interests you. So say you wanted science chat, I could search for SciChat, and then I could use that save feature and I could save it as a column in this account so that all that side chat tweet information is in one column. I can find it really quickly and easily and then I can just scroll through my columns and find what I want to find really fast. I can even compose tweets from this app. So when I tap the compose tweet box, it's the little rectangle or square with a pencil. Notice I can compose my tweet right within Hootsuite as well. And I can still add a picture, I can put links in, and this will even shrink a link for me that's too long that helps me keep within the 140 characters. I can add a location, I can select from my contacts, etc. So I can tweet right from within Hootsuite as well. So the best way to get started with Twitter is just to begin with maybe following a couple people or doing a search for a hashtag that might interest you. I'm going to share some of those people and hashtags on the blog. If you have any questions about Twitter or you want to try it out, you're a little nervous, don't hesitate to come see me or see your instructional tech in your building, and happy tweeting. <laughs>